Hey everyone, it's Katie from Without a Crystal Ball. Welcome back to my channel. It's Monday, June 5th, 2023. I hope you're having a wonderful day. I've been getting a lot of questions about this new Duggar docu-series and Katie, why are you not involved? And I thought, well, let's just come to my channel without my face. I know I'll be back soon, I promise. But I wanted to sort of address just a couple issues and why I'm not involved and why I wasn't in the series. I want to start off with simply a disclaimer that says that I am so proud of all the survivors that bravely shared their stories and were spoke out and received a platform that they had never had before and were able to talk about what happened to them inside of this group. I don't think that experience should ever be overshadowed by the information that I'm going to share. And I fought very hard for them so that this wouldn't happen. And I'm not trying to dampen their stories. I'm just sharing like, this is why I'm not involved. And this is why I couldn't be involved because of who was involved. So in the very beginning, I was put in touch with Amazon through Jim Holt. I know this is going to sound ridiculous, but in the fall of 2021, Amy Duggar King reached out to me and said, hey, uh, do you, Bob and Jimmy, Jim and Bobby Holt want to talk to you? And I was like, oh, that's weird. Okay, sure. Knowing that Jim Holt and Jim Bob were best friends growing up, knowing that Josh and Kaylee were once betrothed and knowing that Jim Holt was a big part of what happened when Josh S8 as sisters, I was like, sure, I'll talk to them. So I was put in touch with them. We did a Zoom. It was an interesting conversation. Uh, I thought they were very scripted. It seemed like they had talking points. I could tell that Bobby was really looking to Jim for like correction or like she would correct him and then he would say something and she'd be like, oh wait, no, that's not right. This is right. And I felt like they would say something that was truthful and then like cover it up. It was very, I can't explain it in a way. It just felt like I wasn't be, they weren't being genuine. I believed a lot of what they told me about Josh. I believed a lot of what they told me about the time at the church. I had other elders that I could speak to and I had other people from that period of time in the Duggars lives that I could verify things that the Holtz were telling me. So I felt like, okay, if they're lying about something, I can cross reference this with someone else. Not long after he gets in touch with me and I do the Zoom call, he's like texting me all the time. And it's very bizarre to me. He's like very much wanting to figure out who I'm talking to from the past. And I thought that was bizarre because I protect my sources. And he was very obsessed with who I was talking to and what they might know. And he's like constantly throwing these names out, whatever. And I didn't want to get in the middle of it. And I kept telling him, I'm not going to tell you who my sources are. And I didn't know why it mattered, frankly. And so once we're going through and the trial is over, it's at that time that he and Bobby tell me that they've been signed on to this docuseries and they have talked to the producers and the producers want to talk to me or something like that. And so they gave me... They gave the producers my phone number. So oddly, I was put in touch with Jim and Bobby Holt by, I was put in touch with the producers, a guy named Mike and Olivia and Alexa uh, in January of 2022 by Jim Holt. Now, when I got on the phone with them, it was so weird because they were like, oh, we've been like following you for like months and we've been wanting to talk to you forever. And so Jim made it seem like they didn't know who I was. And then when I got on the phone with them, they were like, yes, we want to speak to you. We've been wanting to talk to you. You're going to be an integral part of the series. And I was like very like flabbergasted because I was like, what? Okay. And it became very clear to me that they didn't have a lot of people signed on at that point. And I had never spoken to a network before. Since then, I've spoken to a lot of networks working on other projects. So I'm a little bit more, a little less green, but kind of felt like they were sort of interested in finding out who my sources were. And so that kind of lined up to like why Jim was trying to figure out who my sources were. And so as I'm talking to them, they're like, well, who can we speak to? And what's this? And what's that? And like, what about what Duggars will talk to us? Do you think Jill and Derek? What about this person? What about that person? And like, who are all these people that you're talking to, Katie? It just sort of felt like they knew that I had a lot of sources and they kind of wanted those sources. And I just was like, well, you know, I do have a lot of sources, but I really don't know if they're going to want to go on camera. I did talk to a couple and they all said no. And, you know, 
I just said, you know, you might have a hard time finding people to go on camera for the series related to the Duggars. One, because of retaliation. Two, the exposure. They don't want to be exposed to such a large audience. Three, they'd be going up against a cult. Four, they have their own skeletons in the closet. You know, I was trying to tell them, like, a lot of the people that are in this culture have bones and their graveyard and they're ugly. And it's they don't want to speak because of that. They're like, oh, no, we want you to do this. We want you to be on. So we, I signed an appearance agreement and I was set. And then I was on a joint text with like two of the producers for a while and I was sharing information for them. And we were talking about some of the biggest things within the Duggars, different companies, theologies. It was very clear to me that they didn't know a lot about the faith. They didn't really understand a lot of the nuances between what the Duggars believe and what like say, Jeremy and Ginger believe, and even though there's not a lot of difference from a high level when you look at Reformed theology and you look at what the Duggars believe, this is a huge thing that they fight about in this world, and I don't know why, I can't explain it to you, but they do. And so huge family fights have gone on between those who are Reformed and those who are not. And I was trying to sort of explain to them like that background of things. I also was sort of telling, they wanted to know if Bill Gothard would talk to them. Do I have Bill Gothard's phone number? And I'm like, uh, no. What about David Waller? Would David Waller talk to us? They were really, they didn't have anyone at this point. They didn't even know how to reach out. So I'm, you know, I'm contacting my sources that are survivors that works with Gothard. And I'm like, does Gothard have a phone number? And, you know, they're like, I don't know, contact his Facebook page, you know, like, so I just wasn't as helpful as I think they needed me to be. And my sources didn't want to go on camera. And so as I'm talking to them, I signed the appearance agreement. Yeah, an appearance agreement. And then I wasn't going to get paid because unless I were to bring things to the show, like if I had materials to add. So a couple weeks later, I'm getting all these messages in the meantime about Jim Holt. And all these messages I'm getting about Jim Holt are horrible. Oh my gosh. People were messaging me that were friends with the Holt kids, people that grew up with the Holts, people that went to church with the Holts and the Duggars, people that know the Holts today, people that like, oh, people from the IBLP that knew the Duggars would sometimes go to the Duggars and knew the Holts and all of the stories were bad. And I was like, oh my gosh, what have I gotten myself into? Cause I didn't like the guy to begin with. They're telling, what they're telling me is horrible, you guys. They're telling me about what he's done to his wife, what he's done to his kids. And it's very bad ABUSE and it's ugly and it's really horrible, like fists and body slamming and uh, just, injuries to necks and masses on legs and kids having to go to the hospital and it's just not the kind of stuff that they were talking about at all on the IBLP show so the IBLP docuseries was like they were talking about spanking it was far beyond that like way beyond that and all of his kids always had mysterious ailments that had to, they had to go to the hospital and it, in the like very short time I knew it like I spoke to him and they're all saying he's a monster don't like, he needs to be exposed. He's not a good guy. I saw him do this to Kaylee on his wedding day, on her wedding day. Like she said, he, someone said he punched her in the face and oh my gosh, Jim married Kaylee to a guy that's just like Josh. I talked to Kaylee and she's like, well, he was when he was a teenager, did it one time. He's got better. He went to therapy. That's Kaylee's story. So I'm like, Jim, did you marry your daughter to a guy like Josh? And he's just like, well, I spent two years working with him and I was convinced he was fine after that. And I'm like, oh my God, okay. Meanwhile, Jim and Bobby are on like, we saved our daughter from uh, Josh when they like threw her to the wolves. And I can't say that her husband's a bad guy now. I don't know. I'm just saying that like he had the same history as Josh, okay? And in, some, in doing something to a sibling. And so I'm like, okay, this is a mess. And then I'm hearing about all the things he's doing to his wife and kids. And then I'm hearing that two of his daughters had to like literally uh, escape and be rescued from the house because Jim would not allow them to leave and told them that he had authority over them and that as long as they were not married, they had to stay under his headship and that they couldn't move out. And if they were going to move out, they could go live in an RV on the property, but they would not leave. And they eventually had older siblings that were out of the house pick them up and they fled across state lines to another state to leave their father 
and were like living with their older sister for a while and her husband, the the sister confirmed this to me, and got on their feet until they could rent an apartment. And I'm like, so he's basically like Jim Bob. And everyone's like, no, he's worse than Jim Bob. So I'm getting alarmed at this point because I'm getting so many messages about him and then suddenly he's texting me and he's like, I'm going to take down the IBLP. It's time we stop, like, uh, we expose all these men. All these men doing these horrible things in the name of God. It has to end. We need to get rid of all of these jerks in the world and blah, blah, blah. And I'm going to burn it to the ground. And, like, he's calling me constantly about how he's, like, on this mission. And it's, like, the Catholic Church. And and this is going to be the next spotlight. And it's him and Bobby that are going to expose all of these massive horrible things that are happening in the IBLP and they're going to take it down. Then he's like, I'm going to maybe get a book deal. And I'm like, okay, I don't know what to do with this. So at this point, I'm like, okay, this man thinks he's going to take down the IBLP. I need to let the producers know who this man is. So I did some sleuthing and I provide some documents to the producers. I show them that Jim Bob was paying Jim Holt money uh, for his campaigns, that Jim Holt got a piece of property gifted to him by Jim Bob in like 2014 or 2017, I can't remember the date, that uh, Jim Bob was giving gifts a lot to Jim Holt in monetary, and it seemed like he was doing that so Jim and Bobby would stay quiet about Josh while the show was on the air. And I also brought up a court record which showed that Jim was not allowed was not allowed to be around his granddaughter out as a part of a divorce. And I said, listen, this is a court order that says Jim can't be around his granddaughter. Here is a land deed that shows that he's getting gifts from Jim Bob. I said, this man, and I'm telling them physically, I'm like, I spoke to his daughter and she told me this, and this is what happened. And I have proof from his daughter that she married someone like Josh. And I have proof that he did X, Y, and Z to his kids. And I'm like, this is not your guy to help take down the IBLP you might want to find a new source. And I'm so concerned at this point because his job, he believed, was to expose the IBLP. And my concern was, one, he's not a good guy to do that. It would be like Michael Pearl trying to take down the IBLP, you guys, or Bill Gothard, or any of these guys that are jerks. It would be like Jim Bob being like, I'm going to dismantle IBLP, and I'm just like them. Like, no. Not to mention, I was worried about the survivors. So I was like, okay, so they're going to put survivors on this on the show to talk about their experiences, and they're going to be platformed with other people. And mind you, Jim and Bobby are trying to portray that they're out, that they don't believe these things, that they've left this philosophy, that it's really progressive. And they might have left the IBLP, but he has not left his authoritarian control of his family. His daughters might wear pants and bathing suits, but they are oppressed and controlled. And I'm worried about the survivors at this point. I'm worried about what the survivors are going to feel if they find out that they're on a series with a guy like Jim Holt. And I was like, okay, well, sometimes you got to bring in jerks to tell stories uh, and you can't be super picky about their backgrounds. I was trying to be objective there, but then I kept thinking, but he doesn't want to do that. His goal is to look like he's out, that he's a really good guy, and that he uh, wants to save the IBLP victims. And so I was just worried about what would happen when this show goes on air and this kind of crap would come out about Jim. And I was not expecting a court case to pop up. I was not expecting Jim and Bobby to separate during that time. I wasn't expecting any of that. I was thinking about how are the survivors going to react that watch the show and the, that participate in the show? How are they going to react? So I started talking to a couple of survivors and I said, well, what would you think about if Jim, Bo- if Jim Holt was on this and he was the guy that was going to take down the IVLP? And they were so mad. They were like, no, like, This is why it's so hard for us to share our stories. This is why like we shouldn't be platforming men like him and like it's not his job to take things down. It's like if you want the survivors to feel safe and like they can share their stories, you need to give them a safe space and they're not sharing the spotlight with a guy that's done things that are terrible to his kids. And so I'm taking all of this feedback and I'm thinking, yeah, you know what? They have a point. They have a point. And I have 
really trusted a lot of these survivors and built good relationships with them. I don't agree with them theolog theologically. A lot of them are still conservative Christians. I don't believe like the same worldviews as them, but I also believe but I believe fundamentally that their right as survivors is their right as survivors to tell the stories that they want to tell in the way that they want to tell it. And it should be done in a safe space where it's not going to be manipulated into a situation where they might end up on a show with a guy that has a horrible history, but is also pretending to play a guy on TV taking down the IBLP. And that's exactly what Jim Holt did in the series. So I'm warning them about Jim Holt and I'm sending them all these documents and they're basically like, uh, we'll look into it. During the same time, Jim Holtz starts to realize that I'm on to him. I confront him about it. I tell him what his daughter told me. I tell him what I found out. He's like, I don't do that. I deny it. Deny, deny, deny. Bobby denies everything, even though I know he's doing things to Bobby. And I'm like, do you blink if you need help, Bobby? And nothing. So suddenly Amy Duggar King starts going on this rampage on Twitter and she's like, I hate Katie. She's such a fraud. She's such a liar. She's the horrible person, whatever. I don't even remember what it was. And come to find out in April of this year that Jim Holt was in her ear during this period telling her that I was a liar, that I was a fraud, that she couldn't trust me, that I was only out for money, that I was lying about him, that I don't know anything. Because meanwhile, I was telling Amy and Deanna, who are really not the kind of women that want to be involved with someone like Jim Holt. And I'm like, yo, you don't want to get messed up with this guy. He's not a good person. Like, be careful. And they were having a hard time believing it because he's charming superficially and he's a good liar. And that's my opinion. So Amy's like, he is like super upset with me. This whole weird feud happens. And then Amy and I are fine, by the way. And at that point, I knew I couldn't be involved. And I didn't even really care at that point if they cut me or if I left. But I was just like, I know that I'm not going to be a part of this because one, Jim Holt's going to be involved. Two, I can't stop Jim Holt from being involved. I've done everything I can to try to get Jim Holt out of this. And three, I don't know that the survivors that they do get are going to be treated well because I don't know what they're going to tell them because they weren't telling anyone who was involved and who wasn't. So you couldn't talk about if you signed or if you didn't sign. And so participants were left in the dark about who was in the docuseries, unless they were seen on camera together and knew about it. So some of them might have found out as a surprise at the end or after filming was over. I wanted to do right by the people that I've gotten to know that are survivors, that are big advocates for being, they've taught me a lot about the rights of them telling their own story and protecting their stories and allowing them to share their stories in their own time and in their own voice and giving them the space to share with me anonymously if they want to, and then allowing them to say things on their own platforms if they need to. And I was trying to be very mindful of just how intimidating it is to get out of this culture and speak up, and so being really respectful of that. And so it just felt like I couldn't trust the direction of it, and I also didn't know Jim Holt. I didn't like that he was involved. Jim Holt was making my life hell turning people against me, making people think I'm a liar. Who knows what he told producers? I have no clue. But I'm sure I just became too controversial to them. In the meantime, I got involved in a different production with a different series. And so I couldn't, I didn't have the bandwidth. And so I eventually contacted them in March. And I'm like, listen, this other company has contacted me. I just want to know what's going on because I haven't heard from y'all in a minute. And like, can I do this or am I still with you? And they were like, you know, we've had so many commentary people uh, we're just going to go this direction. And I was like, kind of shocked, but very relieved and not surprised because I was like, well, yeah, Jim Holt, he totally made this a mess for me. Here we are. The series is out. It's oh, here we are. We get to April and it's April 21st. And I find out that Jim Holt has a order of protection out taken by his son, Samuel and his wife, Bobby. And Bobby has taken this order out for herself and her minor children. Come to find out that Jim and Samuel had gotten into a fight in front of some minor children. He basically attacked Samuel. It was horrible. And Sam hired an a lawyer and they he had all the evidence he needed. It had been brewing for a very long time. He gets the order of protection. Bobby is almost forced to do it as a result of what Samuel did because his order is going to say it happened in front of minor children. So Bobby then 
has to file to protect her kids so she doesn't lose custody and to protect herself. It turned out to be a good, like, ultimatum for Bobby because ultimately she got out of the situation and she now has a 10-year order of protection and she is safe from him under the law if he abides by the order of protection. The order of protection was put in place for final on May 8th of 2023. It was temporary, was ordered on April 21st. On April 21st, I contacted the producers, hadn't talked to them in over a year. I just sent them a text and said, like, listen, there's an order of protection out against Jim Holt. I was right about him. Um, I wasn't lying. And he's been doing this to his kids forever. And like literally in two seconds, I was on the phone with the producer and I was shocked. And she's just like, what's going on? What happened? And she wanted all the details. And I'm like, well, I don't know all the details, but here's what I know about what's been happening in the house. And then I sort of explained to her about my feelings about how I was treated and how I felt like she had kind of been interested in a lot of my sources and that Jim was making my life hell and that all of that chaos uh, made it messy. And I don't know, she it was very weird because I was like, I don't know what you're going to do now, but you are going to have him on that show. And I know what he's going to say. He's going to try to look like the sympathetic dad that's taking down the IBLP and he just cares about the kids. P.S. He doesn't care about the kids. And you're going to have him on your platform and he has two orders of protection on there. And you're going to have him on an interview with Bobby, who's now his known victim. And so she's just like, well, all I can say is that he doesn't come off as the most truthful, best historian and doesn't paint himself in a very good way. I felt like the way that he painted himself was just Jim Holt. I didn't think that he came off dishonest. I also didn't think that he came off as a bad historian. I think there was one time they caught him and said like, oh, we went to the police in 2003 and then he showed up on the Duggars show in 2004. Okay. Uh, and beyond that, I didn't get a lot of times where I feel like the producers really were like, gotcha. I mean, him saying that he married Bobby when she was, or he met Bobby when she was 14 and he was 19. And then he said, we marry him young. Like that was sort of cringy, but I wasn't going to be like, okay, that's just Jim, you guys. That's how Jim is. And, but I, for the most part, the way that their narrative was, was like, we're just these caring people and we just wanted the right thing to happen. And all we wanted was Josh to get help and he never got help. And we just wanted to be taken seriously. And now those little girls never were able to get like the justice and they wanted. And finally, I was believed with my testimony and finally this and finally that. And, and I just kept thinking like, okay, I have so much sympathy for Bobby, but everything she was saying about the girls was literally probably what she was saying about herself because she couldn't tell anyone how she was feeling. She couldn't express the rumblings in her heart. She wasn't giving her children a safe life because of their monster dad. So I was furious. I was furious because when the show ended, there was no disclaimer. And I was like, they know that there's a 10-year order of protection out there. It would have been at least responsible for the victim Bobby for there to be a disclaimer because I would imagine watching this with her now for Bobby will be very triggering because it'll be next to her dude that has been doing horrible things to her for like 30 years but there wasn't a disclaimer and I was mad and I think I had a right to be mad because one I warned them about him when I talked to them in April, they were still in post-production. It wasn't done yet. They said they'd just gone to Arkansas for B-roll film. They'd just seen Bob, Jim and Bobby Holt not long before that. Uh, they were going to film some scenes with them, but they decided not to. As far as I knew, the show was not filmed yet, completed yet. And adding things in post-production, like up until the very last day, is not uncommon in, in, in this world. Like to add a disclaimer at some point in the last episode wouldn't have taken that much time. And there wasn't like, there was a statement by the Duggars and there was another statement by the IBLP or something like that. All they would have had to do is put something there and it wasn't there. And so my inbox starts getting bombarded by people that are survivors and they're like, what the hell? They didn't even address Bobby's and Jim Holt's stuff. And they didn't, they either didn't take him out and I couldn't understand why they didn't take him out because they'd already committed to him. So they didn't, heed my hear my advice about not putting them on their platform they wanted bob and jim and bobby holt to be the historians for josh though i'll do a different video where i can tell you the things that they lied about because they did lie several times while they were talking 
And that's the problem with Jim and Bobby Holt is that they don't tell the truth. There's things that they 100% factually knew about Josh. They 100% uh, dealt with the situation on, May, on March 30th, and they 100% had Josh confess to them. But there's a lot of details in between there where they're not super honest, or they try to minimize their involvement in the situation and sort of put it all on the Duggars when Jim was a, like, he was a mandated reporter. He's, he was a pastor. And so he was under the law required by law to report Josh, and he didn't. I was just mad because they didn't address it. I'm getting messages from survivors. They're furious that this guy's in the video, in the series. They accept that he's in there, and then they at least want a disclaimer at the end. Because other people were watching it thinking that these guys were good people, and they're not good people. I got bombarded with stuff. I haven't spoken to the producers. I'm more like, why aren't you in this? I'm not in this because of Jim Holt. I am don't want that to take away from the survivors that shared their stories. I don't want that to take away from Jill and Derek being brave and sharing their stories. That to me is great. There was parts of the series I also didn't agree with, but I just feel like the producers were like very in over their heads and they were trying so desperately to find people that they just took a lot of different people that had a lot of opinions but not a lot of them knew the Duggars and so unfortunately the story about the Duggars was very pieced together with a lot of speculation and a lot of assumptions that unless it was coming from Jill and Derek a lot of the stuff that was coming from the other commentators I could tell you very factually a lot of those speculations were just plain out false like what they were saying about why Anna doesn't leave Josh, that's not the case. Or the d domestic discipline stuff that doesn't happen with the Duggars. Or just a variety of different things that were like sort of implied or insinuated about the Duggars that I just knew factually weren't true. And it's just, I'm glad that this is out there for the survivors. I'm glad that they told their stories. I'm sad that Jim Holt was involved in it. I'm sad that for the survivors that were hurt by his involvement that there wasn't a disclaimer for why for what happened i'm sad for bobby that there's not a disclaimer and i'm just sad that for a group that claims that they're trying not to protect abusers and that they're they're railing at tlc for platforming an abuser with the duggars and yet they did the same with jim holt and that felt very hypocritical to me like how can you claim to care about the victims if you're platforming the abusers I can understand having to interview someone, but not in the capacity that the way that they interviewed the Holtz. Like I had to platform Caleb Williams and interview him about his involvement in the trial. We did not talk about his crimes because I did not want to go there. I just wanted to know what Josh and Anna were doing to him in relation to Josh's case. That was it. That was it. And I didn't agree with anything else about him. I don't agree with his crimes. I didn't want anything. I didn't want to like elevate him as some sort of victim because in the w world of his crimes, he's not a victim. What Josh and Anna and the family did to him, he was definitely being railroaded. And cults are like that. They're messy. But I just felt bad for the victims because I'm like, this is just, this is going to look like a mess. And so I'm spending half my day today with people that were on the show saying that I don't have a right to be upset that Jim didn't have a disclaimer. And then I've got other survivors coming to me that are like, Katie, thank you for speaking up. Thank you for doing something for us. Like we haven't been heard in forever. We just wanted to say thank you. All these different survivors are like coming to me saying like, I appreciate your care and concern for us and you're advocating for us. And I'm like, okay. And again, just want to say like, I don't want anyone to feel like if they were involved in it, they were wrong. I just personally could not be involved in something where they were calling out abuse while giving a platform to an abuser who was at the moment of those interviews involved in abuse and ultimately while production is going on is taken from his family with two years, two 10 year orders of protection against him, two 10 year orders of protection and no disclaimer about it. It's just, it's, it's disappointing. And I just feel like they missed the mark with having the Holtz and they missed the mark with not having enough voices to properly represent the story of the Duggars without the speculation of 
commentators that are just sort of speaking to their experience of the IBLP, they were trying to use the commentator stories as a sort of way to demonstrate and play out Josh and Anna's stories. But those people's stories, those survivors, their brave stories were not identical. And that's the thing about the IBLP. There were some families that were more deep into it and the, the atrocities they faced were worse. And then there were some that were not as deeply into it. And so they didn't face the same kind of things. There are some survivors that were harmed by Bill Gothard that came from homes where their parents did not implement corporal punishment and did not do spanking. It's a very wide gamut of how deeply people adhered to the rules. Some people followed all the rules and some people were like, we're going to take this rule and that rule and we're going to throw the rest out. Okay. And so it's hard to generalize all people's involvement in this and say that it's like, everyone felt the same things. The people that were deeply in and very entrenched, of course, they felt and saw a lot of the same problems, but not all of them. So it's just hard because you can't paint everything with a broad brush. And I just sounded like Cody Brown. I just want to say that's why I wasn't involved. I think how Paul and Morgan were added at the end was another issue I had because they were never part of the IBLP I felt like the way that they painted the Christian nationalism and dominionism and sort of pinned it all on Gothard was Gothard was definitely trying to stretch it out and fill out into the government and stuff, but they don't have any training institutions anymore. They have literally closed down all but two. Northwood still exists and Big Sandy, and that's it. Everything else is gone. They've sold off almost all of their properties. They have a skeleton crew. They have hardly any full-time employees. They have lost money year over year over year over year. They don't have the kind of power that they once did. They're not filling up stadiums. Bill Gothard's not involved. They're using Gothard's teachings and that part goes on and that's horrible, but they're not the, they're not the powerhouse that they once were. And that's all because the Duggars lost their show because Josh got caught and, 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 and Gothard got called out to the carpet on 24, in 2014. But Christian dominionism and nationalism is not is not unique to just Gothard. And to say that all Christian influencers are influenced by Gothard is to me a huge reach because I'm not a fan of Paul and, Mor Paul and uh, Morgan, but I know enough about them. I've actually spoken to Morgan and I know she's super homophobic and I hate that because I'm bisexual, but she's always been super nice to me. So it's just like this weird... I just try to like respect our differences and be as kind as possible because I never feel like yelling and screaming at each other will get you anywhere. And I feel like humans are more alike than we are different. And so anyways, I didn't like that Paula Morgan were added as though they were influenced by them because I know they're not. I know that what they're speaking to is literally Christian Christianity. And they're not following the same level of authority that Gothard is. And her saying she submits to her husband is in the Bible. So that's not a Gothard thing. Um, submission is usually at every Christian church. They just package it in a different way. And as a believer, you can decide you're going to submit or you're not. And it's just, that's what you do when you're Christian. And so I had a lot of my followers saying they felt like it was an attack on Christianity and they didn't feel like, and then it was attack on homeschool or this or that. And you know, no one's going to, it's not going to be perfect for everything. My issue was Jim Holt, but I'm proud that the IBLP has been shown on a very big stage there's so much more that they could actually show. I don't know if they're going to do a second season. Maybe another, there's another uh, documentary coming out with the survivors of Gothard that was made with an independent film company that's really catering to the survivor stories and taking care of those stories and talking about the healing and the of recovery from the trauma, which to me is the essence of how do you get out of a cult like this and how do you survive after being traumatized for such a long time? And that's coming out soon, so I'll let you guys know about that. But to all the brave survivors that have survived the IBLP, I see you and I hear you. To those that were on the show, I see you and I hear you. I don't hate anyone. I thought, again, overall was really good, but I didn't want to be a part of it. Jim Holt made my life hell, made it impossible for me to be a part of it, and I'm not upset that I wasn't a part of it. And Jen from Fundy Fridays was a commentator from YouTube, and I thought she did a fine job. So that's all I've got. Tell me what your thoughts are in the comments below. Bye, guys.